Tech, they've got to win that battle at the line. It's, they, they, not, they don't shoot well, but they do shoot well there. If they can double up Miami in that statistic, they can have a chance. Big night in the ACC. Six games on the conference card, and we're delighted to be with you tonight from Atlanta. Jackets win the tap. Abdullah Gay against Anthony Lawrence. Miami opens man-to-man. -man. Here is Duke. And taken away Brown on the bounce pass for Kogi. And Bruce Brown dunks Miami to the lead. Uh, you know what, Freeze? He's a great defensive player. He always takes on the challenge. He wanted to guard a Kogi. He always gets the best perimeter player. And uh, Alvarado just a uh, kind of a lazy pass that time. But when Miami can get steals there and run downhill, they're very dangerous. Brandon Austin is a two-year grad transfer from Lehigh. Alvarado, of course, the very fine freshman player for the Jackets. Seven to shoot. Here's a Kogi against Brown. Pretty good matchup there with the two sophomores. The hanging jump for Josh Okogi. Very good defense, better offense that time, and that's a Kogi's game, mate. Uh, you, you, you want to make him beat you over the top, but he's so strong he can get to the paint. Ball game locked up at two. Better than a minute gone here in the opening half in Georgia Tech, kind of the amoeba-looking zone. And Vasilievich a three from the corner. Oh, he needed that big time. Uh, you know, their best three-point threat, but did not have a good game at Pitt. Uh, only one of five from three. Kind of a carryover from a disappointing shooting effort in Hawaii. Yep. And the three ball games Miami played out there in the Hawaiian uh, Airlines Diamond Head Classic. 5-2 Miami. Baseline, Austin, Okogi, Ian Brown, pretty good matchup there. Shot was short, Josh got it back, tried to square and stick it back, and knocked away last touch by the Canes. And another look at the ball movement here, just six to shoot for Georgia Tech. Yeah, and they're going to, uh, you got to really defend cutters, and uh, they run a lot of ball screens, but he's the one guy, Wes, that you really have to lock down on on the perimeter and when he gets off to a good start that could be dangerous with only six seconds on the clock on this underneath out of bounds they do run a play where they'll throw a little lob to Lammers inside Pat Driscoll has come over here to the table and I think they're doing a little game maintenance here on the shot play. so Josh Pastor will use this opportunity Makogi looks like he's taking the initiative here early Mike to kind of energize his team especially at the offensive end yeah, and uh, he also got called out too by uh, you know by Josh and, and Josh Pastor told us he said he, he did it right in front of the team it wasn't like he walked out to the press conference and uh, yeah, it, did, it, it actually did hit the rim so it should have reset at that point so they're going to put it on 30 so a fresh 30 for Georgia Tech with the basketball Kind of a fortuitous bounce for the Jackets in terms of their possession here. Yeah, Wes, I, I would look for I look for Georgia Tech to be pretty deliberate in their half-court offense. They want to shorten this game. Lammers a long two. Lawrence the rebound. So quick shot off the inbounds pass, and at the other end, Brown challenging Lammers. It got deflected away and last touch by Miami. Well, Lammers a shot blocker, but that time did a nice job holding his verticality. Didn't get the free throw, but it was able to bump him off enough to throw the shot off. Still a three-point lead for Miami. Here's Austin against Vasilievich. Kogi and Brown squaring off. Lammers on a long drive to the basket. I don't know that that's necessarily his game, you know, putting two or three dribbles from that far out. Duke fast in transition scores. You see, you know, when Lammers takes a shot like that, that initiates the fast break. Yeah, I think it surprises teammates a little bit. And this Miami team can really motor up and down the floor. Awfully effective in transition are the Canes. Akogi. Alvarado slicing through. Inside, last touch by the redshirt junior from Senegal. Here's the look. I mean, this is he usually is a screener in this play, but tries to go all the way in the lane and good outlet pass by Fuel and just nobody back in transition for uh, Georgia Tech. Actually, it was a, like a one-on-three break. But so far, uh, right now, it's been the, the Hurricanes early West who have been setting the tempo of this game. Yeah, three of their first four from the floor is Miami. Building the early five-point advantage with three minutes gone first half. Now Huell and Lammers squaring off. See, it, it, right at least now, Lammers, they can play him one-on-one -on -one inside. And I think he's got the bulk 
in length to deal with uh, Huell on his own. Here's Huell out to contest Lambert. Now Kogi on a hard drill. Bounce pass, Abdullah Gay can't finish, but does draw the foul. Jerry Heater, and it's Bruce Brown, his first, number one on Miami. Boy, that's, a, that's a big foul for Brown to pick up on a cutter. Good roll to the basket by Gay, and uh, it was, a, it was a, a generous call. Didn't look like a whole lot of contact on the play. 52% free throw shooter is this redshirt junior from Senegal. Played his high school ball over at Birmingham at Central Park Christian. Yeah, but if you're if you're Brown, if you're going to pick up a foul. You wanted to be on a Kogi guarding him, not on a having to help out on a secondary cutter to the basket. And knocks the second one down. First points for Gay, who averages under four, both points and rebounds a contest. Georgia Tech was just seven of 18 at the line in Saturday's loss at Notre Dame. Not very many attempts and certainly not enough conversions to win. They were minus seven in the turnover game and had no second chance points against the Irish of Mike Gray. Three from Basile there. Here's Todrick Jackson off Josh Pastor's bench tonight. On the drive, too fast, and Gay trying to clean up inside, score. Yeah, Georgia Tech has gotten to the rim and got some good shots. They just haven't converted, but a, a nice job on the second effort that time. And in the last two possessions, Georgia Tech playing that 1 3 1 zone, trying to change the look up on Miami a little bit. I just told you no second chance points in South Bend. What they do, they got a second chance point there. Lammers bothered the drive by Brown. Alvarado ahead for Gay, too far. Led him too far with the pass. Georgia Tech turns it over in transition. And we get our first stoppage of play tonight in Midtown Atlanta. Bruce Brown, Mike told you at the top, 15,000 miles already under Miami's wings. <laughs> they're only in game two of their league schedule. But a very talented team, and Jaquan Newton lost it on the dribble that time. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, has come in, the outstanding freshman from Reading, Pennsylvania, for the first time. So he takes the floor to uh, join Lawrence and Huell and Vasilevich and, and Newton. That got knocked away by Newton. He'll challenge Alvarado on the drive. No whistle from Jamie Lucky. And Georgia Tech in a play on situation down two. Yeah, Alvarado's that quintessential New York City point guard. Very tough kid. Wow, oh, what a take. I was talking about New York City playground point guards. Uh, that, you know, it shows it right there. Just fearless and going to the rim and listed at six feet tall. Ties the game at seven. Likes and Azundu wait at the table for Miami. This, uh, this, this zone has really been pretty effective against Miami. It slowed them down. Newton short with the runner. Miami started three of four, but have missed their last five shots. And now the travel sends it to Georgia Tech. Likes and Azundu check in, but Alvarado's the star here on the last possession. Well, he made the play down the other end, and you let him get to his right hand, and uh, that time Huell had his back turned to him, and he just ran right up and finished. And you talk about the uh, New York City point guards who have been here, Kenny Anderson, Stefan Marbury, back in the Bobby Cremins era. Jose is from Brooklyn, played at Christ the King. By the way, Marbury would say it's Coney Island, not Brooklyn. <laughs> Kenny Anderson always uses Rego Park. I'm like, really? We all know. In the borough, Kenny, in the borough. There's the runner by Lammers. Well, so far, they've made Lammers take some tough shots yeah. off the dribble. He hasn't gotten good low post position. There's a kick, and we get a foul called on Abuka Izundu, the junior from Nigeria who played his prep ball in Charlotte. It'll be the first on Izundu, number two on Miami. Make no mistake, though, when we watched Jim Larinaga's team walk through today, Lammers was 75% of the scouting report. Well, right? and, and what he had, the plays that they ran over, he, you know, he'd start out at the high post, and then he'd work himself into the post after a little ball screen or a handoff. Yeah. Here's Alvarado. And there's a foul called on a 
It's against Lambert. Offensive foul. Right. No, no, it's on Abdullah Gay. Excuse me, his first, first on Georgia Tech. Right? And this is a matchup I was waiting for with Chris Likes in there against Alvarado. I mean, uh, these two, these two young men are going to go at it because they like to pick up at half court and get right in your grill. Likes is from Mitchellville, Maryland, freshman, averaging six and a half points a contest. A screen from Lawrence. Kogi helping, 12 to shoot. Here's Anthony Lawrence. Lonnie Walker along two. Jackson the rebound. In the open court, Miami's been effective. In the half court, not so much. Stuck on a seven-all tie. Gay feeling it offensively. A Kogi crashed the glass. Last touch by Georgia Tech. More pressure now. Mike, here's Alvarado. And, uh, and Weiss was looking over at Jim Laranega to get the call and almost fell asleep on the play. Likes a three. Long rebound, Alvarado. Kogi on the run out. Jose spinning on Walker. Skips for a Kogi's three. And Lawrence pulls the rebound away from Miami. Well, Georgia Tech has made fewer threes than anybody in the league so far to this point. But that's as good a look as you're going to get. Not a bad look for Vasilovic at the other end. Now both teams in a little bit of drought with their respective goals. Well, the, the lower scoring game definitely benefits Georgia Tech. Yep. It just lasts over 40 minutes. 66 and a half points coming in. The lowest offensive total among the schools in the ACC. Five to shoot. And here's Todrick Jackson. Lefty three. Got his own rebound right back at Lawrence and Azundu, I think, drew the foul. That'll be two on Abuka Azundu, who has had to battle some foul trouble in and out of the ball games this year. Third on Miami, second on Azundu at 6'10. I see Hewell and Brown waiting for Coach Laranega. And if you're if you're Jim Laranega, they, you know you're you're getting what you want defensively. But way too many second chance opportunities for Georgia Tech at this point. That was their fourth offensive rebound. So that kind of it, it takes, you know, shooting a low percentage to do more points per, per possession. Miami makes some substitutions. Vasilievich, who's got the three, comes out. And Brown returns. By the way, Todrick Jackson at the line. Coming off the bench for the third straight ball game. And in the last two, he's averaged 16 points. Mike, six and a half rebounds. Well, the rebounding situation is a very welcome stat for Josh Pastner, who outside of Lammers at nearly nine a game. The Jackets have not rebounded the ball as well as they did a year ago. Yeah, and you know, Wes, as, as the game evolves and has evolved and become much more of a three-point shooting um, offensively for a lot of teams, your perimeter players have to hang in there and get long rebounds. You know, it's... it's you know, Lammers averaging 10 rebounds a game, but uh, you get guys on the wing who can pick up five or six, that's a big boost. Georgia Tech's first lead. Back door for Lonnie Walker. And that is a pretty good illustration of his game. He is extremely explosive going to the rim. So Walker on the board, snaps a 7-0 run by the Jackets. Tied up again at 9. A Kogi tries to answer. Rebound to Lawrence, and he's bumped and fouled by Moses Wright. It'll be his first, second on Georgia Tech. The turtles. Well, and yeah, and, and Georgia Tech uh, taking care of the ball a little bit more, keeping uh, Miami in the half court. And uh, I would imagine now we'll see, uh, probably see Chris Likes for the rest of the first half with the service for those three fouls. Here is Huell, nice turn. Yeah, that's a beautiful move, and he got to clear out. A lot of space to work inside. And that's that little baby jump right hook that he's worked on so hard over the summertime. Alvarado turns it over. Here's Lawrence. Two on three and gave it right back and an offensive foul on top of it. First on Anthony Lawrence, four on Miami, but still a look at Dewan Hewell at the block. Yeah, you can see everybody above the free throw line right there. Georgia Tech not coming with any double team right now, and if anything, you have to make him go back to his left hand. It was too deep a catch, and uh, you see the last five games, he was uh, all tournament in that team out in Hawaii. Yeah. 
And just with every game, you can see the confidence growing. But that one, I thought that um, Amp Lawrence, too much dribbling, really tried to do too much on that break. There were three guys around him. There's Alvarado. We'll go inside 11 minutes to play Miami in front of basket. Jose, a little lean short. But Brown just tugs at it with Abdullah Gay. Likes has Moses Wright, the 6'9 freshman, out there defending. Ten to shoot. Newton to the basket and scores. Second field goal for Jaquan Newton. And a Josh Pastor timeout. He's not happy at all with his team at the defensive end there. Uh, getting right in good guy's race coming off. He wanted him to at least take the foul on that play, if not try to get the block. Here's the look, and you can see uh, going away from the screen, the defender thinking he was going to, you know, wanted him to go that way, and he had no help the other way. Yep. Dr. Jackson really had, there was there was nothing he could do. But if you, if you know you're going to get help on that side of the screen, with, you've got to shade that way. You can't let a guy come back to his right hand. Well, Miami's taking a four-point lead here. Jim Laranega comes into this ball game tonight, Mike. 55th. Uh, road game as an ACC head coach. He's 27 and 27. People say, well, that's 500. 500 on the road in this league? Wins it. Wins the league. <laughs> you know, you, you take care of business at home. And, I mean, you've seen you've seen it long enough. Oh, the, yeah. You know, the, the teams that wind up winning the regular season are the, uh, are the really good road teams. 27 road wins in conference play since 2011 and 2012. Is fourth only by North Carolina with 34, Duke with 32, and Virginia with 30. And, uh, right there are four of your last uh, six uh, ACC tournament champions. Yep. Almost to the midway point of this first half. Todrick Jackson. Gay cannot follow. And the Canes off and running again with Walker from the corner. Air ball by Lonnie Walker. Yeah, that's a force right there. When your offense isn't running well, I mean, you can't just have that one catch and shoot and then just a careless turnover. Georgia Tech giving it right back. So the Jackets have gone about two and a half minutes without a point. And Jose Alvarado gets Abdullah Gay's spot in the air. Six turnovers on Georgia Tech. Ten total in the ball game now between the two teams. Austin has come back with Alvarado and Kogi. Four guards and Lammers out there, really, Mike. Yeah, and just uh, actually both teams playing four around, around one. Huell had it blocked. And possession will go with Miami. Right. And that was a Kogi yeah. getting Huell, huh? Yeah, terrific defensive play by him. I think Huell thinks he's now that, you know, Lammers has to come over and help, so you've got to get somebody from the weak side coming in. You're thinking maybe steal, but he just met him at the top of the rim. Jerry Heater checking the shot clock. And bounce Huell. Walker all the way to the glass and scores. See, uh, there's no need for him to shoot a three right now, Wes. I mean, he, he's so good at that. Build your confidence in the lane, getting to the rim, then you can expand your shooting area. Six-point lead for Miami. Austin threw it at the feet of a Kogi. Brandon got it back on the deflection. Alvarado thought about the three. Here's Lammers on the catch. Right-hand jump hook. And Walker pulls it away. And it's the first time that he has caught the ball on the post. Wow. Four in a row by Walker in a very impressive half dozen in the first half for the freshman from Pennsylvania. Eight-point lead. Boy, Lonnie Walker's been pretty solid off the bench, Mike. Yeah, we talked about this. Could Georgia Tech uh, respond to the explosiveness of Miami? And, uh, you know, you got the two freshmen out there and then Likes and Walker. And uh, Jim Laranega just uh, calls Likes his Energizer Bunny, and he referred to 
Uh, Walker's Usain Bolt. <laughs> well, Larinaga's team is pretty handy at the defensive end of the floor. Georgia Tech's gone three and a half minutes without a point, missed their last nine shots from the floor, but in part and parcel because of who they're playing tonight. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we talked, we touched on it. This is not a great Georgia Tech shooting team. Uh, they've gotten a lot of their jump shots have been contested. They've had some unforced turnovers. The Jackets need a basket. Miami's gone on a 10 0 run since Tech took a brief two point lead at 9 7. And uh, they need, they got to get something out of Lammers. He's 0 4 to this point. Only two rebounds. Austin stepped out of bounds. Turnover number seven for Georgia Tech. Likes and Newton playing together is an interesting combination, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, uh, you know, again, it's, it's kind of forced on him with uh, the, the foul issues. But uh, I think, you know, Newton is, is better off the ball. And uh, Likes is, you know, gives him the ability to, to do that and to be a scorer. Huell, Brown, seven to shoot for Jaquan Newton. Singer from Philly going to work on Gay. And lost it on the drive. It'll belong to the Yellow Jackets. And we've seen a lot of possessions on both ends of the floor go all the way down on the shot clock. Yep. From a tempo perspective, that's what Josh Pastner wants. It, it's, but like they got to score the ball yeah, too. Yeah, you've got to get some productivity out of your half-court offense. The Kogi on the drive against Walker, a little fall away. Second field goal for Josh Kogi. Shooting 40% from the floor and averaging 18 points in the five games that he's played so far in the calendar for Coach Pastor. Well, and it, it, you know, it, it, those two, Lammers and Akogi, it, it, they have got to play really well every single night, and then it's finding that third guy yeah. that's going to be critical for Georgia Tech. Seven to shoot for likes. Feeds Brown for the dunk along the baseline. Well, it's been several times, and that's what a shot blocker's instinct is for Lammers to come up to the penetration, and it's just allowed a few dunks on the backside. Nice little bounce pass. Approaching seven minutes to go first half. Austin through traffic and scoring. First basket for Brandon Austin. Well, he's capable. He's got four double-figure scoring games this year, so he can put some points up there if he gets things going. Just his fourth field goal since he placed back in the starting lineup. This is his third consecutive start. Lights threw it away. Tried to lob to Brown, and Lammer stole it. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised to even see Brown behind Lambert's <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's like an eclipse. Hey, Brown don't throw it up. But, and Lambert finishes the, at the other end. He's got his first points, Mike. Yeah, and that's, you know, he needs to have a strong six-minute finish here. All of a sudden, the crowd getting a little bit more energized because of that play. High post to Hewell. Backs down Alvarado. Here's a Kogi. All the way to the basket, swatted out by Huell. Brown, like spots up from deep. That's a, that was a Jim Laranaga. No, no. Nice shot. Chris <laughs> Likes is nearly standing in the sea in Crimmins when he cut it loose over there. Miami snaps the 4 0 run by Georgia Tech. And Lammers responds with his second field goal. See, you're, you're, you're one shot away from getting into your rhythm. And that last little lob, I think, uh, let's, we'll see how Ben Lammers again goes throughout the rest of this half. But sometimes it's a, just a little thing like that to get you going. Defended it well on the shot by Brown. Five-point lead for Miami, Alvarado. So now we see Georgia Tech pushing it a little bit. Kogi. Game. A little runner by Josh Okoge. He's got a half dozen. Well, he and Lam Stretch earlier in the year where they were uh, home one game out of 42 days. Newton on the drive. Lost it. Alvarado with four to shoot. Miami gave it away. 
game right now. Uh, Jim Laranega clearly you know, there's no foul trouble with any of the bigs. He's just not happy with the production or lack thereof. Rodney Miller three minutes in the ball game at Pitt the other day. Yeah, he's played 31 minutes total on the year. 21 year old sophomore at the other end. Yeah. Quad Newton scores easily. He's yeah, got he's six. And two easily in transition that time. Uh, not good balance by Georgia Tech getting back. Five point lead for Miami. Austin works to the left side. Abdullah Gay. He's back on the score with those despite those three fouls. Here's the drive of Kogi the scoop. Welcome you back inside McCamish Pavilion. Miami and Georgia Tech in their only meeting of the regular season. He served beans and rice in a pregame meal in honor of Rio Joe. He's fired up about that. Yeah. Josh Kogi's got seven on his first free throw of the night. Something bounced out. So a four point lead for Miami. We go down the final three and a half of the opening 20 minutes here tonight. Jackets have not deviated from that zone at all, Mike. No, and it's just, just a lot of standing around. And when they have had some success, they've been able to penetrate the gaps and, and collapse the zone. Walker. Six quick points with a freshman off the bench. Five to shoot. Here's Lonnie teeing up a triple. Jackson, the backside rebound for Georgia Tech. McCogi now against Walker and a bump and foul called on the freshman Lonnie Walker to fourth. Six on my Jim Laranega, 68 year old native of the Bronx. Played his college ball at Providence. Just fun to talk hoops. With Jim Laranega, isn't it, Mike? Uh, it's fun to talk at any any subject with him. Yeah. He's such a well-rounded man. Oh, he's fascinating to be around. Second field goal for Alvarado in traffic. Georgia Tech scored on an inbounds play right there in front of the rim, and they've cut it to two now with under three to play. Jack is to within two, shooting under 35%. And you see likes for Vasilievich in the Miami lineup. Two-point game. And a little lecture for Vasilievich on his way to the bench. Now here's likes with eight to shoot. Skip for Brown. Likes tripped and fouled. With four on the shot clock. Well, I think, you know, Jim Laranaga talks about him and, and the, like being a spud wed like player because yeah. of his jumping ability, but I think he's kind of a hybrid between going way back to Muggsy Bogues and him because he's, he's very strongly built. Yep. A 20 to shoot for Miami on the reset after the foul on Abdullah Gay, which is his second. It's the third. On Georgia Tech here in the final two and a half minutes. Likes nice feed and Lawrence the layup. You know, that was like a quarterback that looked off a cornerback. Uh, he, he looked one way and delivered the pass beautifully. 26-22, Miami by four. Alvarado nicely done with the left hand there, Mike. Yeah, they just cleared out that. Uh, he had a ball that, that whole side to work with. He's been scoring mostly with his right hand in this game, Wes, but that was a good left-handed take. Jackson the steal, and Kogi with Likes defending, and a foul on Chris Likes. Seven on Miami with 154 to play. And so he gets this nice little brush screen right here. And again, there's a lack of help that time. Josh Lawrence and then look inside and steal. And these are the plays that Miami was getting early on in this game. Two shots for Josh Okogie, who played for the USA U19 team last summer, coached by John Calipari. Talk about winning the free throw line. It's a small victory at this point, but Miami has yet to take a free throw in this game. Canes are dead last in the ACC and shooting it better as of late, but Mike, they're still 62.5% as a team. That shows you how bad they were in December. Yeah, and this, uh, we, we 
first four minutes of the game, Miami really set the pace here, Wes, and uh, now they just kind of let Georgia Tech and the crowd back into the game. Tied at 26, likes a deep three again. Bounced out for Gay. Jackson. Skip to the right side for three. And Lawrence finally got enough of it to save it for Miami. Feed to Huell for the dunk. Nicely done by Likes. I didn't like his shot that was earlier with Likes at three. I thought it was a little early, but he really let that play develop through two defenders. And that was an easy dunk. Final minute. Abdullah Gay had it blocked by Walker. Brown the other end. Tried to get it to Huell. Lammer stuck a hand in. Georgia Tech forces a turnover. And Jackson wants to slow it down. Two-point game. Alvarado had it knocked away, trying to feed Gay. Walker threw it up. I think he thought Brown was going to go for the dunk. At the other end, you see what a, you see what a, I mean, that's when you have freshmen, you're going to live with some turnovers, and that was a poor decision by Walker. Then everybody got caught just standing there looking around, and Georgia Tech converts. So 14 seconds to go, and Miami will hold for one. Likes. At the horn. And they'll go to the locker room tie. Sometimes Wes with freshman point guards are gonna have to live with mistakes. Get right to it. Yeah, and you know, I, I, let's see if both teams' offensive execution improves as they're in front of their respective benches. I don't think Jim Larry minds his defense being away from him. He trusts that. Kogi. Georgia Tech opens with the same lineup to start the ball game as does Miami. There's a Kogi to the glass. Missed the shot. Tapped home his own miss. 13 for Kogi, Mike. Yeah, he's been he's been very active, and you know, Lammers had that brief flurry, but Wes, he looks kind of a little lost out there in this game. He's kind of drifted. He hasn't been a passer or a screener, aggressive getting into the post. And Miami turns it over. Uh, and that's, you know, here Jim Larnega talked about really nothing going right. And uh, they come out of halftime. It's their first offensive possession. And there's a, a bogey with a great second effort. Just beat everybody off the floor. But to come down and give a gift turnover in their first possession. So a turnover by the Canes is their 11th. The offense tonight, not so much Lammers, but Abdullah K is handling the passing from the post. And Kogi forced that one. Miami trails two. Georgia Tech's second lead of the ball game tonight. Josh Passer trying to get a little size out on the floor with both him and Lammers. Play a little high-low action. Jaquan Newton. Juan Hill trying to help Alvarado defend it. Seven to shoot, and here's Brown picking up on the dribble. Now Lawrence with Alvarado there. Three to shoot. Newton kicks. Brown's three is good. Bruce Brown's 11th triple of the year. He's got seven on his third field goal. Yeah, and that was uh, that was risky. I thought there was one too many passes, and I didn't know that Brown was going to be able to release that before the shot clock went off. Might be back in front of point. Here's Austin. Looking against Vasilievich. Now back on the block. Abdullah Gay going to work. Left-hand jump hook. Good. Second field goal for Gay. He's got five. And he's an, an, another shot blocker on the floor. 11 blocks in the door, but uh, he's already above his season average. So earning some minutes out on the floor. He's also got six rebounds. And he was he's played better. Remember when Josh Passner got in his face at one time out? Yep, sure did. Inside 10 to shoot. Brown. Three on the clock. Inside, Lawrence can't finish, draws the foul. Well, here's the play a moment ago you were talking about, Mike, and that's the late pass. 
Brown down there, he takes it right on the chops and, uh, and, and you know, kind of lingering. You can see him late getting into the play. Pat Driscoll referee and then comes down the other end. You know, it's amazing how quickly guys can recover going down on the offensive end of the floor, Wes. <laughs> First free throws of the night for Miami. And Lawrence at 65 percent. Knocks it down. Lawrence was he was the one early in the game at pick that held them in. He had 12.6 rebounds, but a lot of that work was done in the first 20 minutes. They get one of two. Now Miami did not shoot many in Saturday's win at the Peterson Event Center, but they did hit eight of nine. And any confidence is good confidence when it comes to that discipline for Coach Larry Vegas. Tied to 32. And a Koji. Blocked by Brown, Vasilievich to take away. Now Newton. Lawrence shoots for the lead. And it's Alvarado. And Brown is the one again who's trying to lift this team up. That was a terrific one-on-one -on -one defensive play that he made on a Cody. Three minutes gone here in the second half. Alvarado all the way through, back out front, Landers over Hewell. It's, it's tough when, you, when things aren't going well to take that type of shot in the offense for Lammers. And again, it's, it's not cutting very hard right now, settling for jump shots. Mike, how much of this is a tough night shooting the ball for either school or what either school is doing to the other defensively? You know, for the most part, I think you'd have to give it to just not shooting the ball well. There's, okay. there's been some pretty good looks at the basket for both teams. There's Alvarado. Fresh shot clock, by the way. Last touch by Miami. Abdullah Gay feeling it offensively tonight. Foul by Lawrence, who's trying to poke it away. Second on Ant Lawrence. Number one on Miami here in the second. Now he can he plays two positions. When they go when they're smaller, he can play stretch four. And you saw the three-point shot before. When Miami chooses to go a little bigger, then he can go back to the small forward position. Six seven junior from St. Pete, whose dad played at Miami. That time Austin lost it in traffic, but a Kogi's got it back to the basket and draws the foul. He'll get to the line for a pair, and I think it's on Brown. And I was wrong there. It's on Lonnie Walker. It'll be his second. And second on Miami as a Kogi will go to the strike. He'll shoot a couple. He's three for four and has 13 tonight. And that's uh, the thing with the Kogi. He's, he's been able to get to his strong hand throughout this game. You've got to make him go left. Thirty-three, thirty-two. Georgia Tech back in front. Almost four minutes gone. And Josh Okogie's got four. Of Georgia Tech six here in the second half. Two-point lead. Almost four minutes gone. <laughs> We've already had a four-point and a one-point game tonight. In the first early three by point eight of ten so far. But West for the Yellow Jackets. 13 made field goals, only four assists. So a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball, and Akogi's been, the guy has been generating that, but i like to see if we get a little bit more out of passing and ball movement. Austin, here's Brown. who were calling for it at the block, but Lammers defending. Walker with two to shoot. And turned it over to Lammers. See, I mean, it's a, again, you got to know, you got to get the ball up in the rim there, because uh, they had uh, Hewell at inside position. Larry Brown, old coach of mine, used to say you make your mistakes on the rim. Gives you a chance to get an offensive rebound. Kogi's been the scorer for Georgia Tech here in the second half. Lammers trying to get started. Six for Ben Lammers. Lead goes to four. Largest of the night for Georgia Tech. And that's about the best look. Got a little brush screen on the side on that wing where he likes to operate. And that one shot in rhythm, only one dribble. Newton now trying to work off a Hewell pick. Eight to shoot for Brown. Cutting Brown all the way to the rim. Block Lammers. Lawrence cleans it up. Well, what Lawrence did, a smart play there 
the shot clock almost expired, but because he tipped it, it hit the rim, and then he went up and got it for a second shot. Alvarado. Now Austin, who's only got a field goal in the first half to his credit. That was a long two. Gay tried to slap it out, but did so to Walker. And see, when Lawrence picks up Lammers out there, he's got the advantage with the quickness. Brown, skip for Lawrence. Attacking on Austin, he'll draw the foul. It'll be number one on Brandon Austin. Three on Georgia Tech here in the second. Well, we've already had five lead changes in the ball game. Three in this half, and we've only played what, almost six minutes. And Wes, I don't, you know, I don't know if they got either team got into the penalty in that first half, but uh, you, you know, it would certainly be the Georgia Tech's advantage if they can keep attacking the basket and get there. What a steal by Kogi! Here's Austin for Alvarado. It got blocked. Austin right back to the basket scores. Unbelievable set of sequences at both ends. Yeah, and uh, right now it's uh, we talked about the energy Miami brought early is Georgia Tech right now. Here's Likes back for Lawrence. Now ten to shoot for Bruce Brown. Brown well out with four on the clock. He'll launch. And a Kogi the rebound of the miss. Why? And it's in the Georgia Tech has been so much better defensively in the first six and a half minutes of the second half. They've forced some bad shots. A Kogi. A lot of off the ball stuff, Mike, yeah. Georgia Tech. Here's a Kogi. Fouled on the blow by by Bruce Brown. Second on Brown, third on Miami. But let's go back to this 94-foot sequence a moment ago. First of all, what a steal by Kogi. Looks like a corner. Yeah, and it just uh, knifed in right there. Kind of a risky pass. And here's that effort again, that second and fifth. ACC College Hoops from Midtown Atlanta. It's not been a work of art. Yeah. And, uh, you know, during that time, Jim Laranaga got a, uh, a coach's box warning. I think he's trying to get the foul discrepancy fixed up here. But that that last one, that was a bad play by Brown. Uh, he really had a Kogi taking a tough shot and gambled and went for the block. Why, I don't know, but put him in the line. Josh Kogi with five and a half, 16 in the game. And we'll see Laranaga flanked by Chris Caputo and Adam Fisher. All Brunt rounds out their staff at Coral Gables. It's interesting how um, you know how Jim Laranega has assembled them, and he has a defensive coordinator in Caputo, and uh, Brunt is the offensive coordinator, and Adam Fisher does every single scout. Yep. Jim's theory all along is that he wants one person giving the scouting report for every team, so they hear the same voice. Nice pass for the likes three, rounded off, and Hugh had it stolen by Kogi. Josh does not have numbers, does not matter, and missed the layup. And it should have mattered. You know, just trying to do too much on that play. One on five. And down this end, Chris Likes has got to give up the three-point shot. Driving miss by Likes. And now a technical foul called on the Miami bench by Jamie Lucky. And it wasn't Jim Laranega. It was, nope. his, uh, it was, it was the bench. But... Uh, and I think Likes came close to getting one, too, because he argued that one that call. And if there's one referee you don't want to get into, it's J.D. Lucky. We will not suffer anything, you know, whether you're a freshman or a senior, right? So Kogi's going to shoot the free throws. The lead is seven for Georgia Tech. Okogi will get one more in the basketball for the Jackets. And Okogi missed the back end. Seven point leader to stay. Mike, look at the plus minus game here for Pastors team. Well, and the one that's really surprising points off turnovers. And uh, that's, 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 that's the end steals. That's a category that you would think coming into the game, Miami would dominate those two. 12 and a half to play. Four team fouls on Miami because the technical is a team foul. Ball.
12 to shoot, and here's a Kogi. Tried to skip it through, taken away. Brown deflected, and Lawrence comes away with it, and there's a backcourt foul on Abdullah Gay. Just let's get to move on. That'll be four on Gay. As a, as a player in general on both sides of the floor, you've got to be, once the first technical is blown, you've got to be very careful. That's right, because that, uh, that whistle can come a little more freely. All right, so Abdullah Gay is going to come out of the lineup. And, you know, five points. Mikey's got a seven rebound game. I mean, but he's the guy they've run the offense through. Yep, no, and uh, he's he has had nine starts, Wes. So you know he's an average about 20 minutes a game. So I, I, you know, this whole season may be just a process for Josh Pastner, who's playing well on any given night. Yeah, a foul called on Jack Bray in Notre Dame to replace. Well, T.J. Gibbs leads four double-figure scores tonight in the ball game against the Wolfpack of Kevin Keats. And Notre Dame may very well try to secure their 12th win. It would be their second in the league tonight at South Bend. Brown out of the timeout for three. Lammers the rebound of the miss. Ben Lammers might not be scoring it, but doing a decent job. He's got six points now, five rebounds in the ballgame. Remember, he's hit three straight double-doubles for Pastor's Jackets. Kogi. Found an alley and could not with Brown. Austin with seven to shoot. And lost it. Akogi at the horn with the back iron. And Lonnie Walker the rebound. Too late coming into that play, especially at the end. Uh, too much dribbling and the point guard, your primary ball handler, didn't have it. Likes the soft runner. Well, Georgia Tech wants to go. And uh, likes. Sometimes for me, for uh, you know, freshman again, you're gonna have to lift some things. But he takes some early shots in the shot clock. Alvarado can't turn the corner against Lawrence. And now the whistle and fouls. This on Azundu. Tough night for Abuka Azundu, Mike. That's three fouls. And barely, he barely touched it well, in the first half. And Wes, here's the thing. There, that play was going nowhere. Right. There was nothing happening, and all it does is put Georgia Tech closer to the penalty for the rest of the game. Five on Miami. Five on Georgia Tech. As we work to the midway point. Twelve to shoot. Austin. Neither team's off zone offense has been ineffective at all. What a big bailout by Akogi. Akogi now, 21 points, 10 in the second half. Jacket lead its largest of the game now at 10. And the way this game has been going, that's like a 20-point lead. Brown splits the two defenders, couldn't knock it down. Missed everything, Akogi's got it. Quickly ahead for Jackson. Fall away, batted away by Brown. Good defensive play in transition by Bruce Brown. Chase down the play, but the thing is, Wes, that Miami has really got nothing in the open floor in this second half. Everything has been in the half court. And Newt can't get the roll. And a foul called on a Zundu, and that is four. Wow. Jim Lanega continues to look for one of his bigs to give him some production up front. How about this? Here's a look, you see the shot clock right there at four seconds. And this is the thing, you know, if a player, he's, Okogi's been very aggressive, getting into the lane, all of a sudden the basket opens up a little bit for him. I mean, he's not a 43% free throw, a three-point shooter, but doesn't take a lot of them. 21 tonight, ties his season high. It's just a rough of a year ago in this league as a freshman. Backdoor, Jackson to Alvarado. And Larnaga wants a timeout right now. Well, Miami takes a timeout. Georgia Tech's up 12. Mike, the Jackets are fascinating from the standpoint that they're going to ugly it up a little bit. And, and are they doing that here tonight to Miami? Well, I, that 
finally that play, I mean, that was beautiful out of the offense. And they were normally a, you know, one of the better defensive teams. And it was Brown who turned his head and lost Alvarado in the back. I mean, it was a great play. Yeah. But the style of ball tonight, you yeah. said this early, this favors Georgia Tech all oh, the way. Yeah, yeah. We saw seven points each, you know, in the first you know, eight minutes of the game. You know, it was not headed in a good direction for Miami. But I just, I just, it, it almost looks too like Georgia Tech has benefited more by having their offense in front of their bench in the second half. Yeah. Well, they've outscored Miami 18 to six to break open this 28 all halftime score. Now Jim Laranega's team who has been everywhere. Hawaii, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to play a home game for Lonnie Walker. Our nation's capital for a game against George Washington. Now on the road for the second straight league game. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if, and now, while well, Miami's got to start converting offensively, if they do that, you wonder if they're going to start pushing the pressure up the floor a little bit. And that one, not even close for Vasilovic. You know, if there's a guy who's going to bring them back quickly, it's him. Alvarado with Austin, Akogi, Jackson, and Lammers. Another more of that four guard flavor for Josh Pastor. Although Jackson and Akogi proven to be pretty good rebound. And that has, again, uh, been a, a huge part of this game, although not overwhelming and statistically. Here's Austin, two to shoot, launches for three. And Akogi the long rebound. He'll go right back at it. Got swatted away, last touch fuel. It will stay with Georgia Tech. Okogie has been the most energetic player out on the floor tonight. They, you know, that saving that possession on a long rebound. Here's the inbounds to Jackson. And he's playing man-to-man. -man. Have been all night long. Austin. He's gotten much out of that side pick and roll with Lammers. Here's Lammers reversing around on Huell, and it fell off the front iron. I might have gotten away with a goaltending right there hitting the net. Lawrence a soft push and score. Seven for Anthony Lawrence. And some pressure coming from Miami. Yeah, after the make two. Ten point game under eight to play. Todd Jackson. Lammers. Had it altered, I believe, by Hewell. Might have gotten a piece of it. Newton down on the block. Hewell with the right hand. That is a, a poor decision by Lammers with that shot. He had a wide open. He could have gone left. But then beautiful position by Hewell on the other end. And he is really tough when he turns over that left shoulder. Four straight for Miami. They've cut it down to an eight-point game. Approaching seven minutes to go at McCamish Pavilion tonight. Georgia Tech only shooting 32% in the second half as Austin misses. But Miami just 25%. Lawrence all the way for the layup. Right, nice job by Kuehl. He shielded Lammers on that play and gave him a lane to the rim. And just like that, uh, talk about the explosiveness of Miami. Well, that's way too easy for Josh Masters liking, Mike. Yeah, you look like it. Georgia Tech, and, uh, you know, they've taken uh, likes out of the game, and they're going with Newton at the guard. Here's Jackson front court. Yeah, so Newton, Vasilievic, Brown, Walker, and Huell on the floor for Miami. Abdullah Gay has come back with the four fouls for the Jackets. He's played very well here tonight, the redshirt junior from Senegal. You know, Walker, he's got, he's got the athleticism and the ups to play against him. Nice reach in and steal. Alvarado, the turnover. Here's Walker front court, trying to add to the Miami run. Huell, the rebound of the miss, and he's fouled by Lambert. That's number one on Lammers. Six now on Josh Pastor's team. And West, six turnovers now for Alvarado. No assists in the game. DeJuan Huell in the line shooting. DeJuan Huell is 71% free throw shooter. 31 of 44 on the year. This is his first attempt of the night. And it's good. 
Quick reminder to you, coming up on your regional sports network, ACC All Access, Jeff Fischel. Great feature on the women's basketball team at Louisville. It looks like it could make a run to the Final Four. Plus, Kevin Keats is this week's ACC profile. Young man who grew up in Lynchburg, Virginia, now in his first year as the head coach at NC State. And there's that pressure being applied again on the made free throw. It'll be that way probably the rest of the game. Made free throws, made field goals. Four-point game. Eight straight by Miami. Alvarado being defended by Newton. Number 15, Canes, trailing 12 a moment ago. Ten to shoot. Here's Jackson. In trouble. Slips it for Lambers. Okogi with five. Step back three at the top. Westgate, yeah. because of that pressure, there were the, the Jordan Tech got in the offense with only 15 seconds to go on the shot clock. Newton with the right hand. And Lambers the rebound. The pressure also is forcing them way out on the perimeter, too, Mike. Here's Gay. A Kogi. Now reroutes around Brown. Shot with the right hand, and Gay is fouled out of the ballgame. Huell turning right hand, Lammers the foul. That is second eight on Georgia Tech. Lammers just bailed him out on that play. He had gotten where Huell had been getting some good position inside. West pushed him about two feet outside of his comfort zone. That would have been a tough make. Look at here. He's almost shooting this from the ACC. That's a tough jump hook right there. You just let that. You, you pressure it and go get the rebound. A couple of free throws for Dewan Huell from Norland High School in Miami. He's got five and a half, nine in the ball game, and Ant Lawrence is back to replace Lonnie Walker. Miami's now four for six at the line. And in the last four or 36, uh, they've got uh, all they've got their two freshmen on the bench right now. They've got their upperclassmen on the floor. And now here's Lights. As Hewell hits both free throws, it's a two-point Georgia Tech lead. Alvarado, Austin, Okogi, Jackson, and Lambert. Likes has come on to join Lawrence Newton. A little run and jump employed by well, maybe and that got well, knocked away. Well, with Likes, and this may be an offense for defense type of substitution where he put Newton in on the offensive end and Likes using his quickness up the floor. 10 0 run by Miami there to within two now with four and a half to play. And here's Alvarado sprinting up the floor. Lob is stolen by Brown. Save to a Kogi who lays it in. They never save the ball under the other team's basket. It's better to eat that than try to make the great play and get your defense set. Stops the Miami run. Georgia Tech now just one of their last nine. Lawrence missed it. Lammers the rebound. Look for a second. I mean, they get a foul on the play. They're trying to tie him up, and Lawrence just frustrated. But it looked like that Lawrence almost was thinking lob on that play, and then just got caught in a shot. Hewell draws the foul. That is the first Brown. Well, it was a great initial play on the lob. I mean, watch him go up and get it right here. But you're not sure at this point. You can't throw it back in blindly like that. Oh, Jim. Ben Lambert's on the line. Shooting. That's a lot of ball games. That's why I'm sitting over here next to you, partner. <laughs> well, here's Lambers at the line. Georgia Tech's 11 of 14. Ben's got six points, eight rebounds, and missed the front end of the one and one. And so both teams give away a one and one situation. That's just his tenth miss in 43 tries, Mike. He's a 79% free throw shooter coming to the line tonight. Four-point game. Likes. Foul by Alvarado. Second on Alvarado. Nine on Georgia Tech. Free throws for Miami. Oh, we might be going to the wire tonight. Midtown Atlanta. Clemson State and uh, Florida State move up maybe a little yeah. bit with the impressive wins. Here is Chris Likes, all 5-7 of him. Two-time D.C. Catholic League MVP from Gonzaga. Number one team in that circuit in our nation's capital. Uh, Jim Laranega thinks that may be the best league in the country. And, uh, you know, you come out of that, you've 
pretty good pedigree. Yeah. He's ready to ride. Six of nine now at the line this year as he knocked that one down. And a second one good. Two point game. Lights is out. Vasiljevic is in. So there's your offense for defense, Chief Man. I guess, right? Well, yeah. I might the other way around, though. That, uh... There's the inbounds for Lammers, and now a Kogi, a free run to the rim with Brown. I, I just, you know, there was, it was, that was like having eight men in the box in football. Yep. Everybody was pressed up. And you got a guy like Lammers who you can throw it into at any time at his size. Great execution against the press. 25 for a Kogi. Georgia Tech lead four. Newton spins and loses it. Alvarado with Lawrence and the Kogi. He'll feed it to Josh, and he's fouled on the way up. Foul on Newton will be his first. Eight on Miami, G man. Well, look at look at where all the Hurricanes are pressed right there, and you just get this catch. And then the, the, right there, that was the real issue that Lawrence went for the steal. You come up empty on that, and it's easy two points. So Kogi, who at the line tonight, is 8 for 10. And he's, uh, eight all, of a, 11. all of a sudden now, in the last couple of minutes, the free throw line has been failing Georgia Tech. Four-point game. Josh Kogi has half of Georgia Tech's number tonight. 25 of the 50. Uh, you know, a little slow getting in the game, but I definitely think he was the most energized player in the second half. Five-point game. Taken away by Alvarado and a foul on Bruce Brown. And Brown is saying that he's fouled, but the, it looked like he got caught West surveying what was in front of him and those quick hands, you know, instead of batting down on the ball, which you get normally get a foul, he popped it up in the air, and a lot of times you'll get that call. Alvarado plays beyond his years, Mike. <laughs> Well, there's still, we talked about the six turnovers, but still, as, as far as toughness is concerned, yeah. it, you know, despite that, West, his, his facial expressions haven't changed, his body language hasn't changed. Um, just, I love the aggressiveness of the young man. Trying to make it a seven-point game, it does. Plus, to have your point guard as an 82% free throw shooter in the end game situation isn't bad either. Well, he's got four double figure games now in his last five. And double figures in each of his first two league games as Yule finishes the Brown feed with a dunk. Back to a five point game, 240 to play. There's Austin, had it poked away, and Lawrence call for the foul. It'll be his third, and that's 10 on Miami now. With 2.37 to play, so two free throws the rest of the way on common fouls. Yeah, here's the look. And, you know, again, we talk about calls that you're probably not going to get in the game. And, uh, the, you know, that reach in, trying for the, the cheap steals is one you're probably not going to get. And, uh, you know, this, again, we have to remind you that one tech has already been called, and there's been some real emotion reaction from the Miami players and bench. Austin's got five. The very rare two-year grad transfer, Mike. He's got this year and one more left in Atlanta. 22 years of age from Vienna, Virginia. Played 62 career games for Lehigh. And got one of two at the strike. Six-point game. Right now, Vasilyevich, he's, he's a guy who's got to get some amnesia in a hurry. Forget those early misses. Lawrence missing on the drive. Hewell the rebound. Stripped of it. They'll go to the deck. Jackson out of there. He'll pitch ahead. Here's Austin and Georgia Tech will wheel it back out and let Alvarado. Well, and what Hewell did by putting the ball on the floor, he brought the guards in and just invited a steal. 2-0-5 to play. Lammers for a Kogi. That's one of the first times they've gotten something good off that, that side pick and roll. Eight-point game now, under two minutes to go. 
Lammers was the guy in the post. Abdullah Gay had been that guy earlier tonight. They go back to the old 44 at the post tonight. Well, look at this, Wes. They see the swing. They clear everybody out. There's no help on the weak side, and Akogi just has a you know free run right to the front of the rim. Well, Josh Akogi, the sophomore, Snellville, Georgia. Career, our season high 28 tonight after the dunk a moment ago. And that fits the bill for tonight's party star to watch. Well, like, well the thing about him, and he certainly has answered uh, Josh Pastner's call. Coming into this game, the eight games that he's played, he's averaged eight free throw attempts. He's gotten there 12 times this evening. He has had a couple of turns in transition. That one a moment ago, and then off the Lammers. Handoff. Yeah, there's just, there, there's nothing you can do uh, unless you decide to leave Lammers, and then he's got to, he can roll right to the front of the rim as well. So, Kogi, you see 28 and 8 tonight. 9 of 22 from the floor, 9 of 12 in the line for Josh Kogi. He's our hardy star to watch. Of the guys out on the floor, if you're Miami, the one guy you can take a chance with in fouling is Tiger Jackson at 62%, but everybody else pretty reliable. Miami out of timeouts, Mike. Josh Pastor has one. And here's Likes. Vasilievich, Likes, Brown, Huell, and Lawrence. Back for likes. Blocked Alvarado. And it's blocked off the glass. It'll be goaltending on Dewan Hughes. Boy, how, and you know, we talked about it, but at 5'7", likes is going to have shots like that blocked. Alvarado's no giant. But uh, despite the mistakes, he has made some incredible plays. Look at that anticipation. You don't normally see a six-foot guard get a block. Here's Likes off the screen and a three. There's your amnesia. Yeah, Likes says, <laughs> how about that? Get a piece of that one. Seven-point game under 90 seconds to play. Akogi racing it into the front court. And he doesn't want to foul here. Akogi will go all the way to the glass and roll it in. 30 for Akogi. I don't uh, you remember with that rule change. You can dribble all you want. There's no five-second count. Likes launching again. Huel the rebound and a foul, and that's the last thing Georgia Tech wants. Yep. Stopping the clock for free throws, and it's Alvarado's third. That's 10 on Georgia Tech. 58 and a half to go, so two free throws on every common foul for Miami. You let the line shoot it. Here's DeJuan Huell to the strike. Now five for five at the line is Huell. Going to come in uh, once, uh, if Huell makes this free throw, come in with his undo for him. 13 points, eight rebounds for DeJuan Huell tonight. And the free throw no good, but Lawrence gets the rebound. Likes fights through, stolen Jackson. Four on one. Jackson the layup. They get to that left, left hand, but again, the freshman stay. Likes just dribbled himself into trouble. Dribbled himself right into a turnover. Georgia Tech, a 10 point lead under a minute to go, Mike, for taking down a ranked opponent. Tap follow of the Likes missed by Brown. Bounds, here's Lammers, and a foul by Likes. Second on the freshman. Lammers will walk to the other end, and he'll get free throws. So here's, the, here's the play, and they've, been, they've, they've talked about not over-dribbling, and Miami has really worked on that since the pit game, but that's what happened in that play. And then uh, Jackson, who hasn't had a huge offensive night, confident in that take. 
Lambert's missed the front end of a one and one earlier. He has six points, eight rebounds tonight. And the free throw good. Well, you said earlier tonight, the four keys to the game. Georgia Tech had to win the line, G Man. And they've, uh, they've doubled up uh, the Hurricanes at that, uh, in that statistic. Boy, what a uh, what a mental health win this would be for the Yellow Jackets who had lost six of eight, yeah. plus three games here at home already in this year. Brown front court, final minute. Jackets by ten. The runner with a right hand, no good. A Kogi to rebound. Shot clock's off with 22 seconds left. Yeah, I think uh, Jim Laranaga is going to pull the plug and. Alvarado will be content to dribble this out. Huge, huge win for Georgia Tech. Very impressed with Alvarado and Akogi. Played like an all ACC player tonight. You bet. Josh Akogi had 30 and nine rebounds. Georgia Tech hands number 15 Miami. Their second loss of the year. Great to be with Mike Jaminski, our producer Joe Vincius, our director.